And we are live. Hi, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the Halloween edition, the pre-Halloween edition of Blog Chat with Matt and Lance. Hi. Hi. It's Tuesday. It's it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. And there's colors. There's lots of colors. Please yeah. say hello in the chat. We want to know who's here. Uh, you know, we we like to we like to see those comments flowing in. So please say hello. Uh, like that. Hey Jay, welcome back. How you doing? I should hey, look at that. Andros Island. Where, where's Andros Island? I think we gotta go look that up. Andros Island. Bahamas? We, we need our intern to look that up for us. No, we can just, you know, putter around during the beginning of this. The Bahamas. Yay. My memory is pretty good. Oh, right. Right. Awesome. We have another Lance. Lance and Lance. Do you know this Lance, Lance? I don't. Hi, Lance. Meet Lance. Howdy. I should do this uh, hand because it's more in hey, the frame. How you doing, Jason? Hello, hey, Ed. Ed. Good to see you. Hello, Peoria Videos. Noise. From Chicago. And Paul, and Paul good hello, to see you, hello. Paul. And Sue, hello, Sue. And she Lance. She looks foxy tonight. Yeah. <laughs> she looks foxy every week. <laughs> and Ed, hello, hello. Jersey. North Jersey. Nice. All right. So uh, Lance and I are colorful tonight. Uh, just because, you know, it's a it's happy pre-Halloween. Really looking forward to, and we uh, really didn't want to wear a mask tonight. So, right, right. So right. lights instead, colored lights instead. Colored lights. So uh, welcome to blog chat. You know, and uh, just a reiteration here: um, if you have questions, ask anytime. Just post them in the chat. I uh, would love it. Uh, and if you're watching this on the rerun, post them down in the comments. Uh, if you have questions you want to send us offline, send them to Adventure at National Parks at Night. But to get to tonight's topic, Lance yes. wrote a, a wonderful blog post about going gradual, a guide to L L L L L L L L L, as Gabe likes to call it. Yeah, well, there there's some disagreement whether it's L L L L or just L L L. You know, what I think you're going for the you know, if you're going for it, you might as well go for it and use all four of them. But, you know, Chris, our our language nerd. Maven. Said, well, low level is hyphenated, so we only used one of those two L's. You know, he knows his job so well, I got to go with him. So it's, it's three L's because the first one's hyphenated, right? Okay. So low level landscape lighting. Lovely. Lovely. Let's talk about it. Lovely. So I mean that it's all it's all in the title, right? Low level landscape lighting is about using the drip method of lighting, right? Right. It's using the drip method of lighting when the situation calls for it because traditional lighting methods don't work so well. Right? But, yeah, absolutely. I think we should just jump right into your first example. Let's show everybody what we're talking about. Okay. Well, here we are at the lovely Pemaquid Point Lighthouse in coastal Maine. Um, this is a obviously a long exposure shot from the star trails there. Um, I think Matt's got the caption in, in information, so I'm not going to shout out what it is because I don't remember. <laughs> but okay. 386 yeah. seconds, F4, 1600. Yeah. So um, there was a a wee little teeny touch of moonlight, but not a whole light, not a whole lot. And um, the rocky foreground there was going to be pretty much in deep shadow without any lighting. Now, 386 seconds divided by 60, well, that's like six and a half minutes or so. Um, so that would have been plenty of time to go around and wave my flashlight around and do or or run off to camera left and pop a flash but if you can as you can see from the the surface of the rock there it's not exactly very flat and very even um so i went with mounting a light on a stand and just putting it on at a low intensity and leaving it there for the entire entire duration of the shot as opposed to waving a flashlight at the at the rock for a, sh a brighter flashlight for a shorter period of time 
So, so the point here is that like a dripping faucet, you can fill up an exposure with a very low level amount of light over time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's probably not the best example to start with because the kind of the, the classic use of low level landscape lighting, which we'll get to with some of the other examples, is when you're doing a short exposure and you don't have time to do the lighting in mm. 15, 20, 25 seconds. Mm. But we'll see that in the next one, I suppose. Okay. Well, let's see what we got here. Well, you know, I can keep this on here. Um, so, yeah. Let's talk oh, about yeah. Here's a, here's a really short one. This one, I think, is only like five or six seconds. Oops. I got to change. Caption. <laughs> Not wrong caption. I got to catch up, man. Oh, okay. Slow director. <laughs> Four seconds. Yeah. Well, you're 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 wearing a lot of hats here. And uh, as a matter of fact, that rock in the background kind of looks like the sorting hat. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? J.K. Rowling would be proud. Uh, yeah, we're just not so proud of her at the moment. Anyway, um, right. So yeah, this this one. Um, the exposure was just four seconds and it could have been longer, but uh, I wanted to keep it short to make sure that those stars were really sharp, pointy little star points with no trailing. Um, and I think this might've been the first time I was shooting with a Z6 and just kind of testing it out to see what it, it would do. Um, I had stopped down pretty far to 7.1 because I wanted to get the rock in the foreground, which was, you know, maybe like three or four feet from the lens all the way back to the stars. And I wanted to make sure they were super sharp. So um, four seconds is obviously not enough time for me to run around from behind the camera around that rock formation and put some light on it. So um, there you go. Luxly light on a stand here um, is the way to do it. And the, the cool thing, um, those of you guys who've used the Luxly lights, they are a bit more expensive than most of the other LED light panels. Um, but it's worth it if for nothing else. I mean, they, the, the quality of the light, the, uh, um, the variability of the light to go from a fraction of 1% up to 100% brightness, um, change from 3,000 to 10,000 Kelvin, or just about any color light you like, like Matt's magenta or my orange right now. Um, but the real thing is that you can control them remotely with an app. And with the the Composer app, I th I'm, it used to be four. I think now you can control six or eight of these things with one uh, with one app. So it's it's extremely useful. I think it has something to do with what operating system you're using, uh, meaning whether it's uh, it's the hardware and the operating system. If you're using certain flavor, flavors of Android, it's more or less, and iOS is more or less. So uh, mm -hmm. your your results may vary depending on uh, what you what you have and what OS you're running. So, but you know, the real fun with these things is to like start messing with other people's lights. And they're like, oh, I thought I had this dialed in just right. Why is it like twelve stops overexposed? I did punk Gabe at a trade show once, and he was really confused <laughs> for about ten minutes. And I felt so bad. I felt was so he bad. demonstrating, and you were. <laughs> That's why I felt bad. I had to walk up and take take. He's, he was like, "I don't know what this thing is doing." I said, "Folks, I'm so sorry. I'm the one who is this. This has an app, by the way. <laughs> I got to demonstrate the app." And this is this is no doubt after you're no longer working for Greatest Group, right? No, it was while I was working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That's why I felt like I was I was a oh, boy. So, yeah. Okay, back to the story. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, Gabe's Gabe's not working watching tonight. <laughs> he remembers though. He remembers. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. Oh so, yeah. Um back to low level landscape lighting. And you can see we use the three L's here because mm -hmm. yeah. Um Right. Um, it's a relatively new technique, and it it arose um, along with the development of high ISO night photography, uh, and which came about 
specifically to be able to photograph the Milky Way and, and star points, um, something that wasn't possible with earlier generation digital cameras and certainly we could never do with film cameras. So um, when you start shooting at high ISOs and your exposures go down to just a few seconds, it, it doesn't leave a lot of flexibility or, or room for, for light painting. Right. So, um, yeah, so here, this, um, this next image coming up is the, uh, the famous arch rock at Joshua Tree. And the before image, this one, uh, is just the ambient light. And that's, so this is a panorama with six vertical frames to get the Milky Way in there. <clears throat> and um, it, the foreground is, is pretty dull and pretty horrible. But, you know, imagine trying to light paint this thing six times in a row for six different frames. Nope. Yeah. So nope. setting up your lights in advance uh, just makes it a whole lot easier. And it also enables a group of people to be able to work on the same shot. So, you know, a group of people shooting a pano is tough to begin yeah. with because you end up getting each in each other's shots. Right. But when you're all trying to do different things in different lighting, it, that makes it even more complicated and downright impossible. So in this case, um, this is with uh, Chris, Chris and I were at Joshua Tree doing a workshop, and we had a group there. We'd set up three Luxley lights on stands and leaning against rocks um, and did our testing. And then we did our, our six vertical frames, moving the camera in between each one. Uh, and it it avoided the need to do separate exposures for the foreground and for the sky. Mm. Now, the other alternative would be to do longer, low, ex, uh, low ISO exposures for the foreground right. and combine them later. So then you'd have 12 frames to put together or, or two six frame panos to then merge together. Um, you know, if you know me, you know that I like to keep my post-processing to a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, getting the light down in the field mean meant that I only had to do one pano and, and not worry about uh, putting together a second one with a foreground and then blending the two together. Now, this is going to sound gratuitous, but I don't know why you would feel that way because you're so damn good at post-processing. And I don't, I hope that doesn't sound gratuitous, but I just think... <laughs> You're the man, so I mean, uh, fine, well, so. maybe the Lightroom man, but I'm not the Photoshop man. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Well, one thing that I've I've always admired about low level landscape lighting, and you made the point here in the blog post, is that it's just repeatable. It's reliable. It's a reliable amount of light that's always the same. It's consistent, and yeah. you can you can focus on other things if you want to, like moving on to more shots or adding accent lighting or something like that. You know. Um, or just kind of enjoying the scene in front of you. So that repeatability is something that you can bank on. Yeah, and that, I think that can go either way too. You know, that the uncertainty of variable <laughs> light painting can sometimes lead to bonuses, you know, unexpected, hey, man, I didn't know that was going to happen. That's pretty cool. Oh, totally, so totally. I, I, you got a point there. You got a point there. I so do I like surprises. I guess it depends if you're making art or doing a paying job, right? Because you How don't want those surprises when you're doing a paying job. Raise your hand if you get paid for night photography. Okay, moving on. Oh, wait. <laughs> 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 okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But I uh, am lucky for it, too. I tell you that. Yes, very grateful. And it took 30 years to get there. And here we are, blog chatting, Tuesday yeah. nights. We're getting paid the big bucks for this one, right? That's right. That's right. We're getting paid <laughs> like a penny a minute. Woo. All right. So time constraints. Yes. Tell there me about time constraints. <laughs> um, well, um, again, when you have uh, a short exposure, and you're constrained for one reason or another. In most cases, um, stars that want to that want to turn into trails instead of points. Um, 
typically, you know, astro landscape exposures are, you know, 15 to 30 seconds. That doesn't allow you much time to do lighting. Mm. Um, so low level landscape lighting, putting a fixed stationary light in position at a very low intensity and leaving it there is one way. And, and by low intensity, we're talking about so dim that it's barely distinguishable from the sky. Because the problem with astro landscape photography is that you are pushing the limits of your gear so much to the extreme. You're shooting at high ISO, wide open apertures, and your, your exposure times are short because of the movement of the stars. So you're testing the limits of the camera, you're pushing it to the edge, you're exposing for the sky, and oftentimes your foreground is too dark, underexposed. Right. Yeah. So add some light to it, but just a little teeny, 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 tiny bit. Yeah. And another brings us to, uh, yeah, brings us to another problem. Um, in some places, some more popular night photography locations, like some of the national parks in the West, um, um, under the jurisdiction of one particular ranger who really doesn't like photographers, light painting has become uh, out of bounds or off limits for yeah. us. So um, through persistence from a dedicated group of photography workshop instructors, we managed to convince this guy that low level landscape lighting was less intrusive to other people enjoying the park, less intrusive to wildlife who just might happen to be wandering through the frame and wondering what's going on with all these flashing lights. Right. Uh, and, and, and I don't mean to be, you know, curt there and, and belittle the, uh, you know, the concern, especially, especially for wildlife. Right. Um, you know, it 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 certainly could be disruptive in, in some places more more than others, but um, it is a lo low level landscape lighting is a way to have minimal impact on the environment and the experience of being in the park for non photographer visitors, for the wildlife, and you know for us too, you know because we don't uh, we don't we're often so focused on the, the photography that we don't stop and uh, enjoy the park as much as we probably should. So. Here's a list of things I know that low level landscape lighting is less bright than headlamps, flashlights, cell phone screens, the flashlights on cell phones. I car mean, headlights. car headlights. It's, the lights on top of police cars. It, when, cars. when you see it in play, unless unless it is a pitch black moonless night, you you won't even know it's there. Our eyes have to be so night adjusted to actually pick it up that it, it won't bother anybody, except if the front of the panel is is within the eye line of view, then right. you could see the panel. But um, for the most part, most people will never notice that it's happening. And that's, and that's one of the beautiful things about it is it's, it's very gentle. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's, it's another tool in, in the toolbox that mm -hmm. you can use in different cir circumstances and different situations. And one that you can, combine with traditional light painting, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think there may be an example somewhere in the post of, of that too. I'm pretty sure there is. Is it this? No, it's not that one. Um, but th this is, um, this is an, a, another lo obviously long exposure shot made um, in the uh, Galeta Meadows area of Borrego Springs. This uh, amazing dragon here. Oh, so this is a, this is a stacked shot. Um, nine frames, three minutes each. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So there's there's three different lights on here, and 
to be honest, this is one that could be light painted, you know, pretty much as easily as it could be done with low level landscape lighting. And the advantage to, in, in this case, a shot like this, the advantage to light painting something when you're doing image stacking is that you can light it a whole bunch of different ways and then just use the lighting that works out best or the ones that you, you want. So here there's a, there's a light on each side of the head and out of the frame on the right side of the dragon, kind of, um, you know, more than 90 degrees away from the camera, kind of almost backlighting on the, to get, bring out the texture in the scales. Mm. So it's, um, you know, it's super convenient to be able to work through all the lighting before you start doing your final shots and uh, get everything just the, just the way you want. Right. It's a different way of working if you're used to light painting, um, especially with image stacking, where you might light almost all of your frames differently and just pick and choose, in po again, in post-processing, which ones you want to include. Hmm. But um, so in, in this case, um, I don't recall if I left the lights on for the entire nine exposures, but... I really could have just used them for one three minute exposure and then turn them off. Which so, you may have done. I may have, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not really a concern because you're used, generally these things, you're using the lights at very low power uh, under moonlight and a lower ISO will be high, right. it'll be brighter than, than usual. But right. in astral landscape conditions with, without any moonlight, you're usually at 1%. And oftentimes putting a neutral density filter or something or a rock or something in front of the light because 1% is too bright. But the Luxley violas go below 1%, don't they? Now they do with the, with the updated new and improved composer app. Yep. Right. You can set it down to a percentage, but uh, a percent of one, a portion of 1%. Um, it allows, and I'll, I'll say though, it allows you to set it to uh, one tenth of 1%, but anything below four tenths of 1% is the same. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, just because the hardware doesn't accommodate that, right. that lower voltage and, and keep the output. Consistent. You know, I learned something about LEDs, and I, I believe this is true. They're not actually, the intensity is not a, a matter of like throwing more voltage in there or not. It's just increasing or decreasing the cycles. It's actually flickering at a really fast rate, faster than any frame rate that we have for video. But it's just like increasing the pulses or decreasing the pulses. So, huh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I should I want to look more into that, but it, it's possible that there's just some some physics that we're running up against here, and you know the the uh, Norwegians just just can't do it because the hardware doesn't support it. So, yeah. hmm. um, but then again, the other alternative is to use this if you don't have a moving subject, right? You can use the strobe mode so that it's only flashing. You know, that's clever. Part of your exposure. Have you done that? Um, I tried it once, but hmm. no, not really. I, you know, I, I hadn't thought of that. That's really clever, dude. Well, if it's flashing, you know, on and off four or five times in a second, you know, yeah. the math checks out. I get it. I just, I hadn't thought of that. That was, that's, that's but, genius. You know, of course, if you've got, you know, foreground subject that's blowing in the wind, that's going to be a different effect altogether. And you could use it to your advantage. Now, I you you made a note here that you said many people who use low level landscape lighting are striving for images that don't look like any light has been added to their images. Goal is to add just enough light to balance the foreground exposure with the sky and call it done. I really admire that that approach. I mean, I like lots of different solutions, but I think that this is a solid reason for this technique being born. Sure, if if you're a um... You know, if you're a traditional nature photographer or a purist landscape photographer, mm -hmm. um, you want your images to look completely natural, and that and this is a good way to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a nature photographer, and and a lot of my work is done 
with man-made elements in the landscape. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I'm usually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not of the school where I'm using, uh, you know, lights like this that, that, uh, you know, bring out that crazy. Yeah. Woo. You know, I'm not using crazy colors in my light painting, but my light painting is usually pretty obvious and stands out and says, Hey, this has been lit. You should look at it. Right. Right. Very different from, you know, the, the nature photographer. Yep. I have confirmation. We have an expert in the room. I have, I've got to bring it up. Jeff said, well, Jeff, no, not this. He said, yes, pulse width modulation. Feel free to ask me. And then 60 <laughs> times a second. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff is a professional lighting designer, an avid night photographer and a dear friend. So, well, well, what if you're shooting 60 frames a second video? Well, there's when these when these lights that you're using say flicker free, that means that their pulse modulation is so fast, so much faster than any frame rate you could possibly set on the camera that it is flicker free because you can't you can't achieve a frame rate that's faster than the the pulsing of the light. So, it's huh. just science, man. Interesting. And, and, and our eyes don't really, that's a little close. Our yeah. eyes don't really perceive the flicker either. So, so. No, no, it's, it's funny. I was, I was playing with, um, I was playing with a new like gimbal camera that I got earlier today and, and I used it in the high speed mode and I think it was 60, 100, 100 frames a second. And the Forza 60, this this really beautiful Cobb LED that I have to the right here, totally fine. The shop lights, the LEDs that I have as overheads in here, whoa, 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 I could see them flickering. So I saw it happen today. Huh. I saw the cheap, cheap as, I'm sorry, excuse me, cheap Amazon, you know, <laughs> lights versus a professional lighting, video lighting solution. There was a difference. So. Have you ever noticed, um, do you, anybody working with a proto machines light and that you can, if you kind of look at it sideways or, or they sweep the light across your frame of view. RGB. Yeah. RGB, it, RGB, RGB. Yes. That, that must be the cycling effect. Yeah. Yeah. And that it's something that I've blending. never seen with, Luxley lights, but definitely always am aware of. This is like LCD projectors too. You see that some people see it, some people don't. But yeah. and, uh, I, I always see that out of the corner of my my peripheral vision catches the matrix that makes up those LED, uh, those LEDs that are are used oftentimes for the projectors. Um, yeah, wow. Some, Jeff. People, some people just don't see it at all. Right. Oh my gosh, Jeff is so full of great information. We got to share Jeff's stuff at the end. We have we're we're in the gear section now, so this is totally appropriate. But I, I wanted to ask you this, Lance: How many different ways have you found to mount, or rest, or use your your LED light, primarily the Luxly, in all of the different ways that you need to apply the the lighting when you're using it? Well, the caveman technique is sit it on the ground and put a rock behind it and adjust the angle until it's just right. Right. Um, but that isn't always the best positioning. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other cool things about this light is that uh, it comes with a little mini ball head that can be put on directly onto um, a 5 8 uh, light stand or screwed into a little quarter 20 threaded thing. Um, and you know, if you can come up with, I, I like to carry, um, a really thin lightweight light stand as a support for it. Um, a lot of people will use their second tripod, but you know, that's a bit overkill if you're not carrying a second camera. Um, I didn't plan but, for this, uh -huh. but I have my, my traditional second tripod with me. Actually, I guess is usually my third tripod. With a with a super duper NovaFlex little mini ball head on there. Yeah. So this is my my pack pod. 
the plastic one. And I've gotten myself out of so many jams because this one has plastic forks in the end. And I just jam these in the side of a hill. And then this can sit almost perpendicular. And I, I remember doing that um, many, many times. Just also serves as a useful self defense in in <laughs> situation. Thank goodness the TSA doesn't know about those spikes. <laughs> They're plastic, but it no. also goes totally flat. You know. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, so the other the other way that I've used the uh, Luxly lights in in many many occasions, it's actually super helpful, um, is with a boom arm. Mm. Got a, uh, an Ellen Chrome six foot boom arm, and um, man, um, up in the uh, uh, Redwood National Park, lighting up the redwood trees. Uh, Lassen, when Chris and I lit up the the, the crater, the Cindercone volcano, mm -hmm. um, holding that thing six feet over my head and walking across the top of the crater enabled us to light up this crater a thousand foot across without burning out the foreground so yeah yeah that that ellen chrome boom is 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 a good one i mean it's i mean you could use a monopod yeah you could use a painter's pole with a with a like a the the screw adapter to five eighths stud and then adapt mm -hmm. that to something else that i learned from you and jim at sleepy hollow yeah amazon basics has a, a 15 dollars monopod that works just fine nice um you know the ellen chrome thing is like 69 79 bucks yeah but, yeah, yeah. As long, if it's a stick that extends that has a has a quarter 20 on the end of it you're golden yeah yep yeah and you can put a quarter 20 on a on a broom handle that's right that's right diy that stuff <laughs> just just have something extra to get it up and above you know with you so um yeah i mean we oh here we are we're, we're talking about some of the things already so uh let's see what else we got you, you mentioned here um tell me about this reverse legs light stand um it's one of the it's pretty much the most compact one on the market right now um the legs fold up into yeah there you go um so it's only it collapses down to the the length of the legs, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like 19, 19 inches, I think. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't add too much to your uh, to your pack when you're lugging right. one or two of these around. And it goes totally flat, right? That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, right. Gabe mentioned there's also a carbon. Yeah, there's the Manfrotto one. Um, the pretty similar. Yeah twice the price and then there's the um uh, oh and that one the, yeah the cool thing about that one is it has an extension on one leg so you can you know mount it on uneven ground a little right. bit right on yeah. a step that's or cool. something yeah yeah that's cool uh, and you can pull out the center too and it's a monopod oh nifty yeah it's just a center column that's nifty and then this carbon fiber nanopole stand fancy <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of overkill, I think, and and I'd I'd rather put the money on something that goes on the camera than almost seventy eight inches high, though. Hmm. Although I know you like to say anything that touches the ground should be top quality. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, I it, I, it, I I I do believe in that. I do. I have to try this out before I I run a verdict on it, but I do trust Gabe's taste in this. So. Yeah. Well, you know, think you're you're spending like sixty five bucks to save four ounces. Right, right. It's got to it's got to have other features to really make me like the max height there would probably be attractive to me. Getting almost seventy eight inches up, that's a big deal. Yeah. So, yeah. And how about the non carbon fiber version that we were looking at a second before? Let's take a look at that. Hoobah! Three point three pounds. More details. Six foot four inches. Six four. That's good. Six so foot that's, four is nice. Uh, that's seventy six inches. Yep, that's nice. Two inches less for. Yep. Yeah. I'd do that. I'd totally do that. Cool. Yeah. So, so um, let's you know let's we've we've talked about the Luxley and and that's the tool that we all use the most, but. You know, you can do low-level landscape lighting with um, 
a 12 pack of tea lights from the dollar store, mm -hmm. the quality of light is, is going to be kind of like what's, you know, what's coming at me from over here. Uh, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> you can you can use your you can use your phone turn the brightness on the flashlight all the way down the, right yeah um oh yeah and those those uh inflatable camping lights that oh, those are cool put inside your tent um and they're like 10 bucks yeah they're, they're great and the the inflatable part gives it in like a balloon that is a diffuser right and that's kind of the uh the key there is is that you've got something that diffuses the light rather than having just a point so illuminates yeah these are great i think jeff mccrum turned me onto these too that's <laughs> yeah that's right i remember seeing him with with one of those too. <laughs> yeah these are great because they you fill them up with air and then they collapse all the way back down flat is that a solar one yeah that's solar, solar. Yeah. yeah these are these are dope thanks again jeff got good taste in light my friend <laughs> <laughs> well this is jeff it is. I mean, yeah. Whew. I mean, he probably, he's probably not saying that we have good taste in light, considering how we're illuminated this evening. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, we're gonna totally get off track. I mean, when we start showing all of the the comments that Jeff's making about the technology behind lighting, so we'll save that to the end. But it's gonna be a good discussion. <laughs> all right okay so here we come to the uh, the, the nuts and bolts of this so um a lot of it is very similar to just the way you would do light painting um you do not want to set up your light right next to or behind your camera uh, you guys should know that by now right so a minimum 45 degree angle off from the camera all the way to directly behind you know pointing right back towards your camera if you want to get that room light, hair light effect. So um, same same, um, same technique, you know, set up your shot first, focus it, figure out your base exposure before you start messing around with the lighting. Although you might want to be aware of the fact that you are planning to add some light to the scene. Mm -hmm. um, you can have it in mind, you know, start thinking about where it's going to be. But you want to get the other stuff out of the way first. The composition, nail that down, get it focused, get your base or your ambient exposure for the sky, and then start playing with the lighting. Make adjustments. Think about the color. Think about the color of the ambient light. Do you want to match it? Do you want to contrast it? And, um, you know, go from there. And you can, you could certainly use one light in multiple positions in different shots, or if it's a long enough exposure, you could you know, move the light from one position to another if, if time allows. But uh, you know, for astro landscape situations, more likely you're gonna be just uh, you know, doing individual frames with the light in one position, move it to the point B and point C for yeah. following shots. Yeah. <clears throat> A little parched tonight. Uh, don't you? Oh, good. You have something to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I was hoping you did. Thank goodness. I lost my phone. I was going to put it out to show something. Anyway, go on. Um. Yeah. Well, that was that was kind of the plan there. Um. Yeah. So we mentioned the app for the uh, the right. Luxly lights, um, which is super useful and super super helpful. And um, I understand that there may be another one of these lights coming out sometime soon. I'm looking forward to that. See what they've got up their sleeves. Rumors. Yeah. Is there is there a site called LuxlyRumors.com? <laughs> you know you've made the big time, and it's <laughs> right. your brand name press Rumors.com. Yeah. Yeah. That but is just it, amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It it really gives you a lot of control over these lights, what you can do with them. Thank you, Casey Krugman. He's the genius behind it. All right. All right. So um work with a partner. I'm waiting for one of these that we can put on a drone. That's what I want to see. I think we could put one of the the violas on a drone. We just need a drone. That's, I think a Mavic Pro would would probably do that. You think so? I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what's coming down the way, but you know, like, um, right. Because you know, with the, the key to using a light on a drone is the ability to control it remotely. Yeah. So, yeah. which would be wireless DMX at this point. And that's something that the composer app uh, seems to be promising. So, yeah. Yeah. What's the Bluetooth range on the composer app? Bluetooth is Bluetooth. And right. Bluetooth, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's the Bluetooth. Lucky if you get like 60 feet. Right. So, not a half a mile away. Correct. <laughs> yeah. They would have to be using one of the other wireless codecs at that point, which, you know, um, the controllers for drones work miles away. So right. they've figured it out. You know, you just need to make them talk with each other. That's all. So here we go. Okay. Yeah. This is the one I wanted to talk about. I had to make it small so we could see. Not bigify, but smallify it. Smallify. All right. So, um, so let's see. Uh, tomorrow night, Chris and Tim are going to be here. There, uh-huh. yes, because they are doing our Alabama Hills and Trona Pinnacles workshop right now. That's those lucky right. dogs, and this is Lady Boot Arch in the Alabama Hills. And nice. you love nice, it. it, nice angle. Yeah, I mean, it's fun to play with, right? Mm-hmm. I think I installed it on the website too. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. So this this shot, um, the light in the background. This this is a short, high ISO exposure. Uh, what do we got? Twenty five seconds because we wanted star points, and I was able to get away with twenty five seconds because I was using an eleven millimeter super wide angle IRIX lens. Um, but still, twenty five seconds was not enough time to run back there and light that arch. So we got a luxe light on the stand. Camera left on the arch, low power. And then on the foreground, I was not able to get that light scraping across both the, the rock on the left side and the right side of the foreground with a light in a fixed position. It needed to be a moving light source. So mm. I used light painting on the foreground with a mm. flashlight and match the color temperature of the light on the background. Mm. Um, and that's, uh, that was, uh, you know, that was a good solution for this, uh, for this image. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, did, did you, how did you, how did you do that light painting in the foreground? Were you, did you bounce it off your hand? Did you bounce it off of the, the ground, or do you remember? No, it's 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 direct. It was low powered, and it was moving quickly and repeatedly okay. until I got it right. Surprise! Uh, oh, so let's see, this is a f eight thirty two hundred. So it's not it's not like shooting at two point eight sixty four hundred. You know, you've got a, a few more stops of forgiveness there. What? <laughs> Well, hi, Chris. <laughs> hi, Chris. I hope you get to go shoot this out, this rock tomorrow night. <laughs> I think he's th- he's thinking about it. Oh, well. Yeah. So you you were moving around, and and this was direct from from the light source to the rocks without and, bouncing or diffusing. Yeah, and it's the I light know. is come the foreground light is coming from camera right, mm. uh, and high above. Um, and then I the moved shadows. down lower to get the, the left side of the frame, but still from the right side. Do you stretch every day to, to, to be able to bend your body into those <laughs> angles? <laughs> uh, no, no <laughs> <but> I should. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Wow. If, if you guys want to see these pictures more close up, please uh, visit the blog post or look in your email. Chances are you're subscribed. And this is a good time to remind you that you can get every single one of our blog posts in your email. If you just go to... Without the two goofy guys talking about it. I know. Well, I mean, you, you got to pay extra for this. You got to like pay with your time and show up and say hello to us. So um, yeah, That'll yeah. cost you dearly. That'll cost you so dearly. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So yeah, yeah. Um, so if you go to our website, nationalparksatnight.com, it's pretty easy to find out where to sign up. 
Uh, yeah. I highly recommend it. Um, I read every email. So, so we have, we have, um, we have, uh, we have a lot of really wonderful comments and I wanted, I wanted to check in and see all the, the end of like, but Lance, you were on a roll. So I'm just going to, I'm going to jump into them right now. Let, let me show you, let me pull up one thing. I, I just, I just found, I, I'll do this. I got you. I got you. There we go. I just came across this. I was, um, I was cleaning out my mom's house last week and she had this on the coffee table in her living room. This is the, the conference catalog that I put together for an Eastern Sierra night photography conference back in 2006. Thanks, Mom. Oh, that's so cool. And, and this, was, this, was a, this was a fun conference. This had um, a bunch of – actually, um, let's see. Who's in here that we would be familiar with here? Presenters, um, Tim Baskerville, founder of the Nocturnes, um, my friend Christian, Tom Pava and Troy Pava, um, Jill Waterman did a presentation, and one of our alumni even. Wait, going full screen. Hey, Sharon. Look at that. Wow. So cool. She did a digital workflow and did a um, – this was 2006, and Lightroom was in – beta at that point and yes. i hadn't even heard of it and she brought out and told me about uh well told everybody there at the conference about lightroom for the first time all the way back in 2006 were you using aperture or photoshop photos uh, i was using photoshop mm. yeah i never i never used aperture i did i did i had an nfr <laughs> i didn't know what an nfr was until i was handed the not for resale disc <laughs> Whatever. Old times. Yo, I, I earned this white hairs. So oh gosh, I'm not that old. Okay, so you some comments. Right into the comments. All right. So there was there's a lot of great check-ins. Um, you know, we have some some funny some funny quips, you know. <laughs> we could we could get it back to four if it was luminous low level landscape lighting. Chris, let us know how you feel about that. <laughs> Well, we'd have to we'd have to check in with uh, Jeff Chewy and see if we could get away with using that, right? Yep, yep. Uh, yes, we agree. the The dragon is beautiful, Eunice. Um, and I wish I'd caught these at the time. You know, I was so I was having a good conversation with you, Lance. Yeah, mm. I that that is a special place. You know, Borrego Springs definitely. It it sure is. I yeah. I love. What do you mean, Borrego Springs? That's Jurassic Park, man. Oh, Jurassic Borrego. Borrego right. Park, Borrego Springs. Uh, always looking forward to going back there. Yeah, and then I know we should just invite we should invite Jeff to talk about lighting sometime, because we we have all these wonderful comments. And if you're on YouTube, you didn't get to see these comments on Facebook from Jeff. Um, it's it's amazing the depth of knowledge that we have amongst all of the devotees of night photography. That everybody's got their own specialties. Um, and it, I always appreciate when people will step forward and share their expertise generously with us. So thank you, Jeff. Um, you're absolutely right. I wasn't thinking about, you know, my battery powered camera not being synchronized with the refresh rate, the 60 Hertz of the electricity of my house. Um, Interesting. I, and I was at hundred frames per second, which doesn't match up, you know? So like, it's really strange. Um, Jay well, pointed out what? I was going to say, if if Jerry was in the house tonight, Jeff and Jerry could be going back and forth, totally geeking out on this stuff. For sure. For sure. We should get a powwow going on that stuff. Um, Jay pointed out that they make metal spikes for the pack pod also. He's absolutely right. But that's something that I could not get through TSA. So I decided not to get the metal spikes for these. <laughs> um, yeah, those plastic spikes work just fine in the sand traps in the golf course, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. And we're, uh, oh my gosh, where were we? Bryce Canyon. I just stuck it on the side of a hill. It was, my Luxley was hanging precariously like eight feet in the air over the side of the hill, providing low level landscape lighting. 
Um, there we go. Juan oh. told us that the CIT has a camera that, that so fast it can film light, ten trillions frames per second. I mean, science, Jeez. man, science, science. And then, <laughs> if you really want to get into it, Jeff, send him a friend request. <laughs> There's some good stuff here. I'll repost this one, or actually, you guys can find it in the comments. And then he admitted that he's sitting in the dark. <laughs> Great sense of humor, Jeff. Thank you. Um, Jay, we completely agree. Uh, we don't recommend to anybody that you try and fly uh, any kind of drone anywhere in, on a National Park Service property because it's illegal. However, so, however, BLM properties are correct. not restricted. So, right. or most of them are not restricted. So, yes, of course, you want to check and make sure it's legal to be flying where you're flying and you don't want to be har harassing or disturbing anybody. Right. And but sometimes they're adjacent to each other. So like the lines are distinct, but you could be close to the area that you really like to be with a drone. And if you go up high enough, you might be able to see into it, but don't cross the lines. So. There's plenty of amazing landscapes that are, <sighs> are not restricted and, and pretty much unpopulated as well. Yeah. So. Eunice, we totally understand. Oh, so you, you met one of our alumni. Um, and I understand. The first time I, I played with the viola, um, it really made sense. It made sense. And that's like, I found out about it kind of shortly after the birth of the introduction of the idea of low-level landscape lighting. And I, I liked how that particular light blends the colors together, the different colored LEDs. So the the quality at 1% was rather high versus other ones where the different colored cells are separated. So there's more reasons than we're talking about uh, why we choose the Lux Le Viola. One of them is distinctly the quality of the light when you're talking about color temperature, CCT. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good choice. And I, I'm going to give a shameless plug now. If you guys decide to buy anything, please use find one of the links in our blog posts and follow it because a little tiny bit of that comes back to us and helps us develop more content. We appreciate it. Um, all right. So, Suzanne, you know what? I, I was developing right before COVID hit. I actually had the workshop on the books, a meditation right. and yoga workshop combining night photography and uh, mindfulness um, and some, some light stretching. So it's yeah. funny you mentioned that it's true. Yeah. So that workshop hasn't died. It's going to come back, but you know, people kind of have to be together for it. So uh, we just put it on the shelf for now, but yes, mm -hmm. yoga for night photography. It's really good, especially when you really got to get into that special spot to do the light painting, you know? Hey, so and speaking, speaking of getting into the special spot, uh, I'm issuing a challenge to Chris Nicholson if he's still watching to get a to get a shot of Lathe Arch while you're there in Alabama Hills. Lathe, L A T H E. Yes, because it looks like a lathe. Oh, cool! Uh, but but it, it requires some spikes on your tripod legs. Let's just put it that way, <laughs> <laughs> and some some agility. Right. Oh. <laughs> there are crevices involved. Oh, who? <laughs> <laughs> Lathe, Lathe arch, Chris. Lathe arch. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make this easy. I'm gonna make a banner. Lathe arch. Oh, I, this is me typing in real time. There we go. And now I'm gonna turn off the comment. Oh, I didn't do it. There we go. Nope. Lathe arch. There okay. you go, Chris. <laughs> um. So. Eunice asked, the quality was great. Any discounts for us? Um, I don't recall whether that's in the uh, the alumni benefits. Uh, well, we here's, take a look. Here's, here's the deal with that. Um, monitor the price over a period of a month or two on B&H right. because that fluctuates radically, dramatically. Um, I've seen it as low as 179 and as high as 299. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we do get a discount, but anytime there's um, you know any kind of a, a show going on yeah. or holiday sales, they do put that on the deal the deal of the day sometimes, and they and they also um, it like for optic and 
Um, I know they're they're having an uh, an online conference coming up fairly soon. It'll probably go on then. So that's right. that's the deal. Wait till it goes down to one ninety nine or one seventy nine to to grab it. Right. Right. Yeah. Deal zone. Deal zone. Deal zone. <laughs> Yeah, sign up for the deal zone emails and all that stuff, and you'll 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 get a good uh, look at that. Uh, Chris said that Sandra says hi. Well, hey Sandra, and that yes, Sandra's at every workshop. <laughs> yes, <yeah. laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> oh, and Jeff said that actually Luxley's on a huge sale right now. So, um, so right. go take a look. Hey, you know, if you're watching this video later, you should still go check. Oh yeah, there's a good discount going on right now. Yeah, it's a good it's a good time. It's a good time. Um, and Chris said, "Oh, he's actually running a workshop here. That's great." <laughs> we know if you know what we've got you. We got you in our thoughts, Chris. Have a great, safe time. Have a successful workshop. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Right. Well, Chris, if you can't shoot lathe arch, put Sandra down in the crevice so she can shoot it. <laughs> Oh boy, you guys are on fire tonight! Thank you. <laughs> this is great. So um, I'm not I'm not going to flash the price, but you can see in the comments if you go to BNH's website that the Lux Viola has a very special price right now. So it's too low to show on our webpage. Too low to show. I mean, if you're watching this video in a couple of days, the price is going to be different. So I mean, it's it's unfair to show it. Anyway, um, I. I say this every time, but thanks thanks for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate you. Um, if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Um, if you've never seen us before and this is your first time, subscribe or you know like our Facebook page or get on our mailing list. Those are all good options. We appreciate it. Um, and Lance, thanks for writing such an informative post. I just got a text from Sandra. She's asking what her assignment is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks for hosting as always, Matt. It's my pleasure. You guys are amazing. Uh, we will see you online. Hopefully we see you at a workshop soon. Uh, keep on shooting. Seize the night. And be well and be safe. Until next time. Indeed. Oh, I have one more thing to add. Tune into Instagram tomorrow night. I'm going to join Gabe, and we're going to talk about shooting spooky portraits. Oh, so cool. We'll see you on Instagram live tomorrow night. Mwah. Love y'all. Bye, everybody. Good night. Bye.